This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Trip Young here. We are on the road. This is actually our first ever road uh, edition of Real Fans Real Talk. We came down to uh, the Washington, D.C. area to, 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 to link up with my brother, my co host, Legend in Two Games, so we can get one on location, man. Um, we, we, had a good, we had a good weekend, but uh, it's time for the wrap up right now. And uh, we got to get ready to get back to New York, but we could not leave without putting a little show together for you guys from D.C. Legend in Two Games, Eric Sanchez, what's going on, bro? It was really good. It was really good, man. Yo, you know, we got such in a habit of saying virtual episode, virtual edition. <laughs> this is one of the first times we've been able to record yes. together in quite some time, man. So I'm, I'm just happy to see you. I'm happy you guys made the trip. <laughs> and we got a lot to get into, man. That's a fact, bro. Uh, man, it was a sad, sad day in the uh, sports world. For me yesterday, oh man, Lamar said, Jackson went out with a concussion and the Ravens lost. Yeah, I'll say you, you say it as if somebody died. I mean, it's a sad day though, man. Like it, it, it hurts, bro. It hurts. You know, I thought we had we had a chance. We kept it. We was in there in the first half. A little disappointed in Justin Tucker. You know, he, he the last two weeks he's missed some big uh, field goals, which could have actually changed the direction of the game going into the into the second half. Uh, if the Ravens go into the second half with a 9-3 lead, that kind of changes how they play the game moving forward. Maybe Lamar Jackson doesn't get hurt. Uh, you know, I know it's just a concussion. He'll be back soon, but he won't be back till next season. So, you know, it kind of sucks. But what are you going to do? Yeah, it, it was a tough loss. Um, we talked about our predictions uh, last week, and I thought the game played out pretty much the way I expected it to. The Ravens' defense was dominant. The Ravens' defense matched up great across the board against the Bills' receivers. Bills couldn't run the ball. Um, I think, you know, the Bills only ended up with about 200 total yards in a game. Yeah. But the miscues on offense by the Ravens really is what did them in. Two missed field goals and then obviously the interception um, in the end zone that gets returned yeah. for a touchdown. That's the difference in a game. But if you're the Ravens, I mean, you, you got to be upset this morning because you got to feel like that went exactly the way we wanted it to go. We held their offense to 10 points. Yeah, that's what you wanted it to be. You wanted it to be a slow, slow down game where you control the clock and you're able to run the ball. They were doing those things. They just couldn't convert their opportunities. And I and I gotta say this, man, because I want this to be on the record too. If the Bills somehow win next week and go to the Super Bowl, we got to look back at this run and be like, this might have been one of, and I hate to use this term, but one of the luckiest runs. The Ravens had five drives yesterday that went inside the thirty yard line of the Bills. Yeah, but only got three points somehow. Last week. The Colts never turned the ball over, punted two times the whole game, had 470 yards of offense, and somehow lost. So if you're Buffalo, you're squeaking by yeah. in ways that no other team has ever squeaked by. Yeah, you know, and uh, man, it just it just it just sucks uh, the way everything ended for Baltimore. I'm hoping that this will be the lead into them finally dealing with the wide receiver situation because when you get put in these type of scenarios where you have to pass the football, so we saw the opposite. Buffalo got in a situation where they didn't have to force pass all the time whereas Baltimore they had to do it because now you know you're playing from behind and Mark Andrews as good as he is Holly, Hollywood Brown is, is an up and comer I think he, he'll, he'll get better you know continue to get better um, the more reps he gets on the field and if he can actually stay healthy but they need a legitimate number one wide receiver and the perfect example for that is the difference in Josh Allen and the, and the Buffalo Bills from last season to this year. They got Stephon Diggs, who's a true number one wide receiver, and they're going to the AFC Championship game this year. Um, if you look at even just the, just the smaller things, look at Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley had record year had a record year this year because he had a true number one wide receiver in Stephon Diggs on the on the other side of the football, taking a lot of that pressure off of him. So he can pretty much, you know, he's one of the better route runners in the league. So somebody like that can can really feast if you have a true number one that you know you have to double team and you still can't stop this kid. You know what I mean? Half the time, even when you double team him. So again, I hope the the Ravens address the wide receiver issues going into next season. Um, one more game though that we saw NFC division game between uh, the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I think most likely going to be the MVP this season, Aaron Rodgers, and uh, a banged-up uh, Rams team. 
Aaron Donald, uh, you know, and Jalen Ramsey, they tried as hard as they could. Right. But I think that that the the, the one two three punch of Jones, uh, you know, Devonta Adams and Aaron Rodgers was just a little bit too much for them. We kind of both you know felt like it was going into the game. We, we both picked the Packers to uh, to win this one. Um, I love what I saw from Aaron Rodgers, and I think and I, the I, the reason I love it so much is because I, I feel like it's a slap back in the face to the Green Bay Packers organization for drafting a quarterback in the first round when you when you a game away from going to the Super Bowl last year, and now you're right back in the same situation, a game away from getting to the Super Bowl this year, and you did not help Aaron Rodgers. He he pretty much did it. Him and his and his guys, Devonta Adams, uh, Lazard came back. You know he was a little bit banged up during the season. You know had a little couple of blips early in this game, but he he came back and scored a big touchdown to really seal the deal uh, for the Green Bay Packers. But you know, if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I'm just like, yeah, kiss my ass. I told you so. Yeah, it's it's amazing that, like you said, they're back in the same position they were in last year. This time they'll be hosting the, the NFC Championship game as opposed to having to go on the road. But they obviously have gotten no contribution from their first round pick because it was a quarterback. Yeah. So just imagine how explosive this offense could have been had they drafted one of those receivers, you know, in in the first round, like a Justin Jefferson, right, yep. or Michael Pittman Jr. You know, one of those type of guys. So. They're, they're clicking right now in all cylinders. They've been my pick to go to the Super Bowl for a few weeks now. I think they will get it done. And, and yesterday was a prime example. And you heard Devontae Adams say it after the game. You know, the Rams were the number one scoring defense in all of football. Yeah. The Rams were only giving up 19 points a game. Yep. The Packers had that in the first half. Yeah. So like, you, knew, you knew it was going to be a long night. Right. right. You knew <laughs> it was going to be a long night. They dropped 32. They could have dropped 40 because uh, Lazard actually dropped a touchdown pass yes. earlier in the game. Yeah. That would have went for a big game. And then Rodgers came back to him later for the touchdown that sealed the game up. I, th- I think they're just clicking right now. And Devontae Adams is a nightmare for anybody. You know, you saw Jalen Ramsey yelling at guys on the sideline yesterday because they had no way to stop him. Yeah. He, anytime he wanted to get open, he got open. And if he wasn't getting open, Aaron Jones was picking you apart. Yep. Or Rodgers was finding another receiver running wide open down the field. Again, that is a very good Rams defense who has pretty much locked down every team they've played this year. The games they lost yeah. wasn't because of their defense. It was because of their offense. But yesterday, their defense had no answers. Uh, we knew Jared Goff was going to struggle in this game, again, with the bad thumb. Mm-hmm. He did. I'm interested to see who the Packers get next week because, like I said, to me, they are clicking, and I think they have a legitimate shot to win this whole thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, he, he, he's having one of those, uh, the, the, the LeBron season from last year where it was the get-back season. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it, they're looking really well. Um, to not have have made any real improvements on the offensive in, end of the football, those guys are clicking right now. Devonta Adams, you know, he's making his case for best wide receiver in football right now. And Aaron Rodgers, shoot, he's putting up a case right now that listen, I'm still here. I'm an MVP, you know, my damn stuff. I'm I'm all pro, you know, as well. And if I can get back to the Super Bowl and win this Super Bowl, y'all gonna have to put a lot more respect on my name. And I think you know that's what he's looking towards doing. It, the games will go through. Uh, Lambeau Field, so they do have home uh, home field advantage going into the uh, the NFC Championship game. Whether it be the, uh, the the Bucks or the Saints, they will have to go to to Lambeau Field, um, which I think I mean for Tom Brady's school, he's used to playing you know in that in that type of of, of weather. Drew's been in the dome a little while, but uh, you know, but the Saints are still clicking on all cylinders right now as far as with their offensive weapons. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's back. Michael Thomas is back. He looked amazing last week. Kamara's looking amazing. Um, but we we, we got to get into that game to this uh, Buck Saints. Um, with that being said, both offenses actually have been clicking the past couple of weeks. We said from the beginning of the season that, uh, that, that it was going to take some time for Tampa to really start getting things together because we didn't have the same training camps. We didn't have the preseason uh, the way we usually do. And sure enough, by around week eight, week nine, they really started clicking. That offense started clicking. Um, I, I, I liken Antonio Brown to a James White for Tom Brady. I think he's that type of receiver for him. That's what he's kind of turned into. And then you got the two big play guys, Mike Evans and Godwin. And shoot, the 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 way uh this kid is playing for net. Um, you know, he's he's out here balling. You know, the past couple of weeks as well, he's actually been able to stay healthy. He's getting into the rhythm of the offense. Um, who are you taking in this game? Um, it's, as they say in football, it's tough to beat a team three times because the Saints did take care of the Bucks the first two times. Mm-hmm. But I still like the Saints in this game. I, I felt all along that the Saints were the better 
team. Yes. Uh, as a collective. And, and you're right. It took Tampa a little while to gel. They are gelling now. On paper, they have the better weapons. On paper, they look like the better team. But I'm going to go with the Saints because I think the chemistry is already there. I think they have the better head coach. I, I think Sean Payton is going to come up with a game plan to slow down this Tampa um, offense. And, and not him specifically, obviously, the defensive coordinator. But I think they already have an idea of how they want to do that. They really shut down Tampa in that second game they played this year. And so unless Tampa is going to have a, a stronger commitment to the running game, I think the Saints are going to beat him again. Bruce Arians is very stubborn in his play calling. He wants to air it out. He wants Tom Brady throwing the ball 30-plus times. And that could work against a lot of teams. But the Saints have a secondary that's good enough to slow that down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what will happen. Tampa will have their moments. Uh, they, they're not, I don't think they're going to shut them out. I don't think they're going to blow them out. I think it's going to be a good game. Again, this is the third time these teams are playing each other. But I think ultimately the secondary the Saints is going to be the factor. The fact that they can get the pass rush without having a blitz, whether it's Davenport, uh, Hendrickson, or um, Cam Jordan, they can get to the quarterback and create havoc. I think they will. And I think Kamara has a big day against the, the linebackers of the, of the Tampa Bay Bucks because they struggle in coverage. I'm going. I'm going in the opposite direction on that one, man. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't pick against my man Tom Too Cool in this type of situation. You know, again, I, I, I truly feel like third time is going to be the charm this season. Um, you know, I just it's just it's something about that Brady magic in the playoffs. I feel like he's he's coming for one, and I, I think the Bucks at least get to. The uh, the NFC Championship game. I'm picking them to to win this one in a close one because um, I, I I do feel like this game is a toss up game. I think either one of those teams is equipped to come out with the victory, but I'm just gonna give Brady and that Brady magic uh, the edge in this one. He's got a point to prove. He's already um, outdone uh, Belichick as far as his team has gotten to the playoffs, but I think he wants to put a little bit more of a of a space in between the two of those guys to in in the age old argument of who is uh, more important, who is the the bigger part of that mm -hmm. Brady Belichick goat goat conversation. So I'm I'm, I'm taking the Bucks in this one, but again, uh, you know the Saints are very capable. Uh, they, Michael Thomas is back, Kamara is back, Drew Brees is back. Actually, I think this this is actually going to come down to to Drew Brees. And, uh, and and what Drew Brees is able to do, you know, are we going to get the because you know we've had the, the blunders the last couple of seasons with the with, with the Saints where they've had they've been in situ put themselves in situations where the game has been determined by some kind of a crazy uh, call towards the end of the game. So is he going to do enough early so that we don't even have that type of a situation when they play the Buccaneers? I don't know as of yet, but again, we got the two grandfathers going at it. Either way, it's going to be an amazing game, and I am here for it. Uh, I, I want to say this before we switch subjects, too, because that's a great point you made about the endings of the Saints seasons the last three years. They've yeah. had some crazy <laughs> endings. Now, three straight years, they've had some crazy endings. Two of those happened in the Superdome, where they're going to be playing today. No matter what happens, <laughs> no matter what happens today, this is the Saints' last home game, because even if they win, they yes. would have to go to Green Bay. So could it happen for the third year in the Superdome? To Jeez. end, we saw the, the, the no pass interference call against the Rams that ultimately led the Rams to go to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, and then last year against the Vikings with, with the crazy comeback and ending to Kyle Rudolph where it looked like offensive pass interference, but it wasn't. Exactly. And, and they blew a lead that, in that game as well. So you're right. Maybe if, if this game is tight, <laughs> if this game is as tight as I think it's going to be, there's a possibility where you start to, it starts to creep back in your mind. Like, mm -hmm. remember the last time we were here. Let's let's make sure we finish it off this time. So that's a great point. Exactly. And then uh, and on the AFC side, uh, Super Bowl champions, Kansas City uh, Chiefs, they are still alive and well. Uh, looking forward to playing at home. They have the, the Browns, who ended off the season as one of the hottest teams in football. Uh, you know, went out, did what they were supposed to do last week, knocking the, the, the Steelers. We don't even talk about the Steelers no more, what they did to the Steelers. But now they're going up against probably the biggest offensive juggernaut uh, in football with the, the level of eliteness at so many different positions on that offensive side of the football. I don't think that the Browns have enough to, to beat Patrick Mahomes. I don't even think this thing is going to be close. I, th I, th I think the... the this is where the Browns go back to being the little brother, uh, bottom of the basement team, and um, and and I'm taking the Chiefs in this one. Yeah, I'm taking the Chiefs. I mean, I don't I don't view it as like them being a little brother. I mean, we, this is just a, a different level of, of contender. Yes, that's the way I look at it. You know, the Browns are a good team. 
they're on the rise. They they finally figured out their quarterback position after twenty plus years. You know, Baker Baker showing them that he, he yes. can be the franchise quarterback. They've got a great running back duo. They've got some pieces on defense as well. But they're just not the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest difference. I am I'm, I'm willing to make this guarantee and I'm pretty safe. I'm, I'm, I feel pretty safe in saying that this is going. This ain't going to be a twenty-eight nothing end of the first quarter score. No, 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 not at all. We're not going to see that this week. I might stop watching football if we see that. Yeah, it, it ain't going to be twenty-eight nothing Cleveland at the end of the first. We know even, even even though Mahomes has come back from those type of he, he has yes deficits before, but I just don't think in this situation that we're going to be seeing that. I think this thing is going to be all about Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, right. Hilaire. Uh, well, is, is Hilaire playing today? I know he's been injured. Yeah, he, no, he's, he should be. He should be. Okay. He should be back for the game. And then Le'Veon Bell. I mean, listen, he's got something to prove still too. You know yeah. what I mean? But I think they have they have a deep enough team, and they have one of the best coaches in football, um, in, in Andy Reid. And um, I think their defense is a little better than they get credit for too. It's yes. not. A, it's not a world class defense. Not a top ten defense. But because they play with such big leads all the time, you're going to give up some pass yards. You know, teams are trying yes. to play catch-up. They're going to throw the ball. You're going to give up a lot of yardage. That's that's the name of the game. But they're good garbage enough, time. Right, but they're good enough to get pressure on a quarterback with Chris Jones and, and, and um, Frank Clark. They're good enough to make plays in the secondary. So I think, I think they're going to show today that they're a better defense than what some people uh, realize. Chiefs are going to win. Yeah, I think the Browns will make it entertaining for the first half because, as we talked about before, sometimes the Chiefs get off to slow starts. It happened last year in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if they get off to a slow start and maybe the Browns are able to go up 7 nothing or maybe 10-7 early in the game. Yeah. But then once that offense gets clicking, there is just nobody in that secondary that's going to be able to run with Tyreek Hill or cover Travis Kelsey. Oh, by the way, Nicole Hardman is running wide open down the sideline. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sammy Watkins is open now. You know what I'm saying? It's, yes. it's just going to be a bunch of guys running around and open. So, And they've been wins. here before. Absolutely. The last three years, they've been in the same uh, situation. The, the only playoff loss on Mahomes' resume is an overtime loss to the Patriots in the yes. FC Championship game. Tom Brady ain't on the field. Bill Belichick ain't coaching against them. So there's no way I could see them losing this game. Exactly. And, and before, before we do transition out of the NFL – we, you know, we got to give our props to uh, Eric Bieniemy and the amazing job that he's done. Um, and the reason I bring him up is because I'm getting a little bit nervous now because I'm seeing all of these coaching hires in the NFL. I see Urban Meyer is down in Jacksonville. Uh, the Falcons have, have brought somebody in. The Jets have, are, are doing interviews right now. And well, the Jets got their coach. Yeah, they got they yeah. got Robert Sala oh. from from the 49ers defensive coordinator. Okay, so now the job pool is <laughs> shrinking up right now, and I'm you know. I, I, I've been saying I'm going to be real upset if Eric Enemy is not a head coach in this football uh, league next season, unless he chooses not to be. Then that's that's something else. But he's just done a, an amazing job for the past couple of years, and he's probably had the best offense in the NFL maybe the past three years mm -hmm. in, in football. So I really want to see him get, get that job. And there's a, a bit of a catch-22 here because you can't really bring guys in while they're still playing. So the deeper the Chiefs go makes it a little bit harder for Eric Bieniemy to get picked up by another team. Um, but I am really looking forward to seeing how the thing plays out because he is one of the better coaches and he does deserve a head coaching job. So I, And I completely agree. He deserves the job, a job, I should say. Uh, we've seen other head, uh, offensive coordinators get head coaching positions who didn't have the track record that he has as yes. an offensive coordinator. He's on his way to possibly a second Super Bowl run. But you're right. The interview part of it becomes tough, and that's why I didn't understand why some of these teams are rushing to hire a guy yeah. because they still and and not just Eric Bieniemy. There are a lot of good assistants that are still out there, you know, waiting for opportunities. Leslie Frazier, who's the defensive coordinator for the Bills, a former head coach as well, he's probably going he's probably going to move up on a lot of people's uh, list in yeah. terms of interest and in wanting to hire him as a head coach. So <coughs> I think Eric Bieniemy deserves a shot right now. I think the best job might be that Chargers job. Yes. As we talked about, because of Justin Herbert, we we mentioned it before. Um, but ultimately, just let the man get an interview, man. Bring him into the building and, and see what he's about and give him the opportunity to show you that he can do the job. And this might be something that the NFL needs to change uh, moving forward because of situations like these, just to open up the interview process. I mean, obviously, it's just your choice whether you want to take it because you do have a lot of things going on um, as far as if your team is still playing. But I think they're at a level where it wouldn't even matter if he you know, did a, a Zoom interview or something, just anything, just to like you know, put, have him in the, in the mix of what's going on with all of these coaching hires. But again, we'll keep you guys posted 
on that. Uh, before we get out of football, though, um, I had something shipped down here to, to Washington, D.C. We had the Real Fans, Real Talk Fantasy Football League, uh, you know, just ended. You know, I took that one home this year, my first ever fantasy football championship. And um, and so they sent something down here to, to, to D.C. They knew he was coming down. So they sent this <laughs> thing right here down. And uh, they wanted me to, to make sure I had this on the air. It made it to parents. It did. It made it, it, it to parents right here. Right so they sent this thing down. Let me see if you can get that on, on, on that camera right there. This is the championship trophy. I had to hold this thing up. Fantasy football champion, Trip Young. Trip Young Ballers. Real Fans, Real Talk 2021. Uh, it's my first trophy, man, and I'm happy. <laughs> uh, you know, I want to thank thank God and my and my mama and uh, everybody else that played in the league, man. I'm going to just sit this here for the rest of the show. Y'all can watch that for us. When we get back to the studio, I'm going to bring that out to the set for you guys to check out uh, live. You got to make studio. sure. Now you got to make sure that goes on your resume because, you know, oh, you're, that's a fact. you're an award-winning director. And now. Exactly. This might be my biggest award, though. This, this is the biggest award. Be, yes. Yeah. This goes up there above everything else. I, I completely understand, man. Above my, my B-plus on my chemistry test in high school. Right. <laughs> move, move, over, move over fifth grade test that on the refrigerator. Exactly, the fantasy football trophy is, is coming home. <laughs> we got one coming home, man. So, uh, but yeah, man, uh, definitely a good year. Thank you to everybody that signed up for fantasy football. We're gonna be right back to it next season. Uh, jumping over the NBA though, James Harden made his debut uh, with the Brooklyn Nets. First ever thirty point triple double in a debut mm -hmm. uh, with the team. Durant also helped out because he put up forty two points. Kyrie Irving is still uh, out of action, though. Um, but, I mean, if this is any you know indication of what we're going to get from the Nets on the court with these two guys playing at that level and the team looking the way it looks, they're going to be hard to stop if they stay healthy. They're going to be tough. Um, I, I think Kyrie being there changes the dynamic of that team. Yes. But, Wild card. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do think that – if they can figure it out, yes, they can be dangerous because Harden showed the full package yesterday. Granted, it's against Orlando Magic, so I don't want to put too much emphasis yes. on what he did in that game. However, he showed you the ability to run the offense, run point, let KD play off the ball, and assist on a bunch of different things going on, and really open up the floor because Harden could do anything he wants with the ball in his hands. And then when you put the shooters out there, like Joe Harris, now they become very tough to stop. And that's why, like I said, if Kyrie's on board, Yes. And they can make this work. They could be a very good team. But if Kyrie's not on board, I, I've I've been open in my in my belief that I you trade Kyrie and you make it work with Harden and K D and the role players because I think Harden and K D are good enough to get you to the championship. Yeah, that that's a championship team right there right. with those you got two MVPs on the same team and they're prime still. That's a good enough team, especially in the Eastern Conference. Um Kyrie is that box of chocolates from Forrest Gump. You never, never know, know what you're going to get. Gonna get. Um, you know, or you don't know where he's at either. Yeah, always. <laughs> always, yeah. Or, always he's at. I really hope that he, he gets his act together because he's actually in a great position because if these guys can actually stay healthy, you got three superstars on the same team, they could go on a championship run if everyone gets their, their mind and, and, and just focus on, all right, we got a task at hand. We're good enough. We're better than the majority of the teams in the, in the league right now. But if we can all be on the same page and continue to build up a chemistry, this is a team that could three p. You know what I'm saying? Potentially, I'm not. I know that's obviously that's a that's saying a lot because it's hard to three p. But if we're just talking about the the caliber of players, you have three superstars, two of which are MVPs, uh, two of which are NBA champions, and ne none of these guys are afraid of the moment. That's the, the potential that's there with the, the Brooklyn Nets right now. But everyone has to be on the same page and willing to make the necessary sacrifices in order for this thing to work. I agree. They got to get on the same page. But we got to see how it plays out, and it'll be interesting to see because I think the East is very competitive this year with Philly, with Milwaukee, with Boston. Um, they've got the best talent on paper. Now they just got to translate it to the court. Exactly. Um, another part of that, that situation, though, uh, there was a trade. That went down, <laughs> that sent hard in there. But the, it also sent Karis LeVert out of Brooklyn, who Karis LeVert is is going to be out for the remainder of the season. Um, I'm a little confused on what's going to happen behind this because I, I don't know if this is going to, to have any type of effect on the trade um, of Harden going to Brooklyn because if he's medically not able to play, um, the only thing though that I that I 
you know, thought about though first was that Levert. They said that that the Indiana Pacers knew that this was going down, but I don't know if if did they know at what point did they find out that this was going to happen? Was it before? Lavert was traded to Indiana because Lavert was traded to Houston first, and then traded to to Indiana uh, for for Victor Oladipo. So I'm not sure how this thing, what kind of effect this thing is going to have on that whole uh, four team type of trade scenario. But it is interesting, um, and and we'll give you guys more news about it as it comes in because this is literally yesterday. Yeah, that stuff is happening late night yesterday, so we're still collecting information on it. I mean, first and foremost, you know, I, I thought San prayers go out to them yes. because it's a mass that they discovered. Um, so, obviously, it's early stages. They don't know what's going to happen, but he is going to be out for the rest of the year. I don't know how this really, how this could be corrected. I mean, unless they already knew, like you said, unless they knew ahead of time and were still willing to take him on. Yeah. But I, there's no way to really correct the trade at this point because it's not like the Nets have picks that they can send you, you know, for, for this situation. Then you also got to wonder, like, what was already disclosed in the medical information. Because yeah. even before he gets the physical, you had to get the medicals from the Nets to show you that he was in good yeah, they, health they, when they traded him. Yeah. So that's the part that I think I'm most confused on because it's like, all right, so who who dropped the ball here? Who didn't disclose this? And and then ultimately, how is the league going to rectify this? Because if I'm the Pacers, I was hoping that Levert could be part of my team this year that's going to be going to the playoffs. Yes. Right? Because they traded away Victor Oladipo, who was a part of their team, and was the starting two guard. Yeah. So I I, tr- I lose a piece. I don't get the other guy I'm supposed to get in the trade. And then mm. I, I can't be compensated any other way because Nets ain't going to send me no picks for him. And uh, exactly. That's it. It's, it's over yeah, for that it's done. So I, I just want to see how the league handles it from that standpoint. And um, it'll be interesting to see how they how they handle these type of situations moving forward. Because in the past, you would make guys go back to the team they were at if, if you didn't pass the, the physical. Yeah. But Harden played last night, so I don't think he's going back. That's what I'm saying. Like at this point, we kind of gotta wait and see. Uh, but again, yeah, we we definitely wish uh, Karis Levert a speedy recovery. That's one of my guys from Brooklyn. I like Karis Levert a lot. I like his game, and you know, I think moving forward, as long as everything is cleared medically with his health, I think he'll be able to come back and be you know and continue to improve on his game. But it's just a kind of a sticky situation, and I've never seen anything like this. Uh, you know, what I'm saying go down. And then, but everything is kind of already in place. Mm-hmm. Every all the moving parts are kind yeah. of in place except for that one. Um, so we're gonna have to wait and see. But we we definitely wish uh, Lever a, a speedy recovery. Uh, finally, we're gonna get up out of here. Just a quick baseball note: the Yankees brought in uh, Corey Cooper for uh, on a one year, eleven million dollar deal to help out with the pitching. I like it. Um, you know, he's he, he's one of those top guys. I know last year he was dealing with injuries, but uh, listen, you come back, give us a good year. Yankees are good enough to to win it all. They have been for the past couple of years, uh, and I think just an addition like that, you know, is, is going to be a huge help. Yeah. And, they, and they brought back Lemay, which is big as well. Yeah, it's a it's a really good move for the Yankees. Um, strengthens their rotation. Uh, low risk, high reward. You know, one year, eleven million, no biggie to them. But they're, they're trying to position themselves. And it's been a good week. They, they bring him in. They re-sign DJ LeMahieu. So they're angling to try to um, obviously get to the World Series. And I think it's, it's both solid moves. That's a fact. Um, really quick before we get out of here, let me just shout out the sponsors. Uh, Petro Home Services, Kmart, the Rosado Firm, and as always, Soundview Liquors. We appreciate you guys for keeping the bar stocked for us. Make sure you guys are tuning in uh, every Thursday night, uh, Verizon 43, 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. in New York City. If you are not in the New York City area, do not worry. You can still watch live every week on the website, realfansrealtalk.com. Also, hit us up on, on, on all our social media, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk, Instagram, Twitter, at realfantalk, and subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Real fans, real talk. And, of course, make sure you guys are subscribed to all of our affiliate podcasts, uh, the, the Sanchez Show, Shooting the Shit, and, of course, the Real Fans, Real uh, Talk podcast. Uh, so, look, uh, we're going to actually, we're going we're gonna to still have a, another half to this show, but you know, we'll do that after we get the results of today's games, and then you guys will be able to watch everything in its entirety. But uh, Legend in Two Games, man, it has been fun being here in Washington, D.C. I'm so glad that we uh, came on the road to uh, make sure we got a, a, a nice show in because we haven't actually been together and recorded right. in months. So it's actually, I'm actually glad, man. You want to give us a final thought? Uh, man, uh, we appreciate the support. You guys keep tuning in. 
Subscribe to the YouTube channel, obviously. Subscribe to the podcast. And uh, enjoy the games today, man. That's a fact, man. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Y'all be blessed out there. Everybody stay safe. For myself, Trip Young, and my co-host, my brother, Legend in Two Games, Eric Sanchez. We up out of here, man. Peace. a different type of blend backing up misfit to make sure y'all tuned in you gotta watch this show is one of a kind updates on your tv screen from eight to nine for the older folks so even if you younger no matter what sport this show we got it covered it's filmed live in the middle of bk so ain't no better sports show to watch on thursdays what's up guys i'm emerald marie and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com